another beautiful day in California. The high temperature today will be 65 and sunny. My daughters flew in from Watertown, Wisconsin yesterday where the high temperature is going to be 34 degrees and the low is going to be 17. So get out, enjoy the weather. Uh, there is a, a, other news today. Last night, our governor, Gavin Newsom, <clears throat> asked all Californians to stay home except for essential needs un until further notice. I have here the um, summary from the state website. The California State Public Health Officer and Director of the California Department of Public Health is ordering all individuals living in the state of California to stay home or at their place of residence, except as needed to maintain continuity of operation of the federal critical infrastructure sectors, critical government services, schools, child care and construction, including housing instruction. Uh, basically, this starts yesterday and is in place until further notice. Here's the places that are going to remain open. Gas stations, pharmacies, grocery stores, farmers markets, food banks, convenience stores, and restaurants as far as takeout and delivery. Banks will remain open, laundry and laundry services. Here's what is closed. Again, and I'm just reading from the government's website. Uh, Dine-in restaurants, bars and nightclubs, entertainment venues, gyms and fitness studios, public events and gatherings, and convention centers. This is for the entire state of California. Now, I do know from some further research I did that's not reflected here, you can go outside, take a walk, enjoy the sunshine, enjoy your backyard, but uh, please maintain social distancing at least six feet uh, away from uh, others while you're outside. Let me give you some uh, prayer updates, prayer requests. Uh, the Cortez family's nephew in law, Jeff uh, Vasquez, he's been with us before. His sister Leslie and his nephew Andrew uh, and his brother in law Kelly all have the COVID 19 virus. Now, Kelly has some. Uh, other underlying conditions, he has been intubated. He's struggling to breathe, so please pray for Kelly and Leslie and Andrew. I do have a praise. All the college students are home. My daughters made it in last night. Leah arrived earlier, so they are all at home now, and we can thank the Lord for that. Our Bible lesson today is going to be from 1 John chapter 5. So if you'll take your Bibles, turn to 1 John chapter 5, almost to the Almost to the end of your Bible, 1 John chapter 5, and we'll look at two verses, verses 4 and 5. 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Um this is the victory that overcometh the world. Now, of course, the world can be people. The world can be the, the system we live in. But the world can be a virus. The world can be the um, fear and the uncertainty and the lack of hope that go along with times like this. But we have faith, and it's our faith that overcomes the world. It's not faith in faith. Certainly not faith in Elmira Baptist Church or faith in the state of California or the federal government or, or doctors or the medical system. Our faith is in God, that God is still in control, even in times when we are certainly out of control. And if the COVID-19 crisis has done one thing, it's shown us that we are not in control of our circumstances. God is, and we have faith in that. So we continue to have faith that God is in control. How do we express that faith that God is still in control in times of emergency? Well, first of all, we're confident that God is at work. In your own mind, remind yourself, God is at work in this. He's not left us. He's not forsaken us. Things haven't slipped out of his hands. He's not busy in Italy and <clears throat> I'll be right with you in a moment. No, God, God is still in control around the world. Second, rejoice. We looked at Philippians 4.4. 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice. Be grateful for what you have. Let me, let me give you some perspective in this. If you are healthy, if you have food, if you have running water and some good books, oh, and toilet paper, you're doing very well. You really don't have that many needs, uh, pressing needs right now. We're enjoying the chance to be with our children, the chance to tell our children, no, you can't go out. The 
governor's told you to stay here with us. Our children really want to get away. Elsie particularly is wondering if she can last three months with her father. But uh, And one of the other members of the church told me that the, this uh, stay-at-home stay order can't last long or the murder rate's going to go up. So there's that. Rejoice. You have food. You have running water. You have some good books. Just relax. God is still in control. Second, reach out to others and share what you have. I have been blessed as a pastor. This, this, this week, I've heard multiple uh, accounts of members of Elmira Baptist Church calling, reaching out to others, finding there was a need, and then meeting that need. Keep up the good work. God is in control, and we don't need to hoard. We don't need to worry. We can share what we have with others. Another way that we can express faith in God during these times, we have uh, printed out uh, a few uh, cards card, on cardstock that just say, I'm your neighbor, I'm here to help. Gives you a place to put in your name, put in your phone number. You can leave it at your neighbor's door. You don't need to knock. You don't need to meet them or shake their hand. Just, just leave it there, reminding them that there are Christians that live near them that care about them and want to be a help. If you'd like some of those cards, uh, please uh, let me know. I, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know how to, how to get some of those. And uh, again, not thinking of mass distribution, thousands of these, just the people on your right and on your left and across the street from you, for example. If you know their phone numbers, uh, you can reach out that way. We've reached out to our neighbors on our right and on our left to just let them know we're here and uh, available to help them. Another way that we're going to express faith in God during these times of uncertainty is through prayer. Our lack of prayer reveals a lack of faith in God. You have, many of us, have extra time to pray. Now, maybe your job is such that you don't have time, and I understand that, but many of us have extra time to pray. Let's spend that time in prayer. I have the prayer list here from uh, this week that Cindy was so good to, uh, to update and send to us by email. If you did not receive a prayer list by email, please let me know. We'll get you on the email list for that. But we want you to be much in prayer. Spend extra time praying for each other. Take your church directory. Go through that. Pray family by family. Also in this time of uncertainty, another way we're going to express faith in God is we're going to continue to give our tithe to the church. Uh, just uh, last night, I was by the church building. I picked up some tithing envelopes. You can mail your tithe to Elmira Baptist Church, P.O. Box 160, Elmira, California, 95625. Again, that's Elmira Baptist Church, P.O. Box 160, Elmira, California, 95625. You can mail it. You can go online. The church uses Tithely. If you go to elmirafamily.com, that's our church's website, in the top right, there should be a button that says More. You click on that button that says More, and a drop-down menu will come. Near the bottom of that drop-down menu is the word Donate. Click on Donate. It'll take you to a page. Read the text, click Donate Now. It takes you to the Tithely website where you can donate online to our church. And if you would like, I can have a deacon come by your house and pick up your tithe. They'll bring you a, a tithing envelope. They'll give you a, a receipt that they received your, your tithe, and they will bring it to the church and, and deliver it. But we want to continue to give, even in times of uncertainty, knowing that God is in control, that he's called us to continue to give, and that he's going to take care of our needs. And then faith presses on even when others become fatalistic. They'll say, oh, nothing matters. I'm just going to sit home and binge watch television. That's a terrible idea. I'm just going to sit at home and eat. That's a terrible idea. Faith presses on. Get exercise. Be scheduled. Uh, spend time in, in the Word each day. Spend time in prayer each day. Press on. Now, someone suggested to me if you have children at home that you need to keep busy, this would be an excellent time to do your spring cleaning. Do the uh, initial work of getting things in order, things put away in their proper place. Then have your children help you wash down the walls, wash the uh, doors, doorknobs, do the vacuuming, uh, sweep the cobwebs out of the corners, do the spring cleaning. Excellent idea uh, if you have children at home. I'll be here again tomorrow at 11. Remember, God is still in control. Until tomorrow.